Hey y'all, I just thought of something to talk about. Um, and it is in response to um, Aaliyah Blasio's, I think that's how you pronounce your last name, honey. Um, your video about body image. Um, and you asked for us to make some video and send it back to you, which I will do in, a, in the small little clip that you asked for. But this is a bigger, a bigger um, topic and I wanted to do my own video on it. Um, here's the funny thing. Um, I was watching Aaliyah's video and she was talking about how, you know, she's overweight and it's, you know, she has been all her life and, and how she, you know, just finally had to decide, you know, hey, I love myself. Kind of like what we're all talking about doing. Only the funny part is this. She said, yeah, you know, I'm about a size 18 and my friend was something and she lost weight, blah, blah. And I had to comment back to her. I was like, honey, if I were only a size 18 again, I would be so freaking happy. I mean, to be able to walk into an Old Navy and pull a little dinner of miniskirt off the rack and a, you know, a t-shirt and a, a hoodie and some flip-flops and buy myself a really awesome outfit all in one spot that goes together that's cool and trendy, to just like walk into a regular store and be able to do that, I would be thrilled beyond belief. Um, so it's all relative. And then I got to thinking about um, re relativity and how each of us, um, no matter how much weight we have lost or still need to lose, so few of us ever mention f feeling like we're there yet, like we've reached some place where, mm, well, you know, I don't really need to lose weight anymore. Um, and, and, and that's not to say that no, none of you have. I mean, I know there are some of, some of you, I even recall some of you saying, well, you know, it's not that I need to lose weight, it's that I need more exercise or whatever. But the vast majority of us, and I mean us in my circle, um, the vast majority of us are, are really struggling to, to deal with food and weight and, and all the issues that come along with it, high blood pressure, you know, diabetes or borderline diabetes, all of that stuff. Um, of course, the social pressures of it and, you know, all of that. Um, and so one thing I wonder is, and I have no idea what the answer is, but I wonder at what point do you feel like you're there? And when I bring that, that part up, because when, when Aaliyah mentioned that, you know, at, at size 18, she, she feels, still feels too fat or feels too fat. Um, I remembered back to the last time I, went, I wore a size 18. I was 42 years old, 42, yeah, or just turning 42, and I had lost, oh, I don't know, 85 pounds or so. I had lost from 100 or 295 or 6 pounds all the way down to 204 or 203. I think I bounced off 203. Um, so you do the math, but that's a lot of weight. Anyhow, when I had when I got down to about 220, I realized I, I seriously needed to buy some new clothes. So I bought a few pieces, and then I continued to lose weight. Well, when I got down to about 210 or so, I bought some more, and it was really interesting what happened to me. Um, I wasn't really paying that much attention to my closet because so many of my clothes were just kind of loose oversized tops with tight like legging bottoms and the legging bottoms went from fitting like leggings to fitting like slim trousers if you know what I mean and that was cool whatever I didn't have a job where I had to meet the public so I could wear pretty much anything um, I would occasionally buy a couple new t-shirts you know size down I really wasn't doing like a wardrobe thing until I got down to about 210 and at that time I remember doing this I took everything off um, uh, I was wearing except for I think I had like pink underwear I just bought a package of new pink underwear in I don't know a size 9 or 10 or whatever it was 8 whatever it was that fit at the time and I remember standing in front of the full-length mirror in my bathroom and I was I was standing and I mean the mirror was behind me right and I was looking over my shoulder at myself and I I noticed how 
all of a sudden I had a shape. I hadn't really noticed it before. I mean, I'd always been kind of hourglass when I was younger. When I weighed, you know, 140 pounds, I was real hourglass curvy like that, you know, very Marilyn Monroe looking. And I hadn't seen that on my body for such a long time. And I looked over and I noticed, you know, how the curve of my back was and, you know, that my butt was still big but smaller and that, that my legs, I didn't have any um, cellulite or anything on my legs that were really shapely and cute. And I was like, whoa, that can't be me. You know, it was really weird. And so what I did is I went to um, several places, but I remember the old Navy shopping trips the best. And I bought a brand new wardrobe. I bought little denim and um, chino kind of khaki or olive drab little mini skirts and I bought t-shirts to go with them and I bought like pullover hoodie things and just all kinds of cute clothes. Um, I then I went I went to Ross and to Marshall's you know those off price places and I bought cute little button-up tops and linen and and I bought this dar I went to Steinmart and bought this darling little um, chartreuse suede shirt that I immediately bedazzled. I jeweled up the collar and stuff. It was really cute. And so I had like this really awesome working wardrobe. And um, I went home. I pulled everything out of my closet. Every bit of it. Cleaned the closet. Vacuumed it real good. Got brand new hangers. And I hung my wardrobe up. I had the double hanger thing and then the hanger deal that's just to the floor. And then you've got the you know, a closet system like they put in new houses. Not super cool, but, but fairly, well, fairly cool. Anyhow, um, and I hung up all my clothes by what kind of thing they were. Everything was spaced um, exactly, you know, like a finger width between each hanger. And I had also bought some shoes. I bought some um, Doc Martin sandals, which I still have. Um, I bought some um, little boots. I bought a bunch of thong, flip-flop thong thingies. Some of them were, most of them were like jeweled or they had, they were cool in one way or another. Um, I bought, oh, some Skechers. I loved these shoes and my dog chewed them up. I had two pair. I had a black pair and then a brown pair, but they were Skechers, um, monk strap, kind of Oxford things on a leg sole. They were leather and you, you know, you'd buckle them closed. I loved those shoes. Um, and then I made myself a couple of ankle bracelets, strangely enough, um, that I would always, I would always wear the ankle bracelets if I was wearing sandals. Um, and I made them out of old jewelry. So they, they were so cool. One was mostly pearls and one was, the other was mostly these old blue stones. Really neat. And I still have those. Um, and I also bought a bunch of tights. Uh, black, just plain black tights. I mean, not leggings, but, you know, footed tights like pantyhose, only opaque. I bought a bunch of black ones and then I bought a bunch of um, fishnets black fishnets. And so here I am, this 42-year-old hag who, you know, dressing like a 16-year-old. <laughs> and I didn't care. I mean, I loved it. Um, I, at the time, my hair was, it was a much, much shorter than it is now and super, super damaged because I had uh, bleached it a bunch of times and I had done a lot of like multicolor hair. Like I, at one point I, I took this entire swath of my head and I did it in rainbow. Um, and this, bear in mind, is long before that stuff was popular. So I was really a sore thumb when I walked around. So anyhow, my hair was pretty damaged. So I went to this hairstylist guy who did an exchange with me. I took a pair of his jeans and I beaded them all up and embroidered them and, and they just looked fantastic because he was also a singer and he wanted something really cool so I made these awesome freaking jeans. And in exchange for that he did my hair in really really tiny braids with extensions. And we did it primarily in like an auburn color because that was the color of my hair, but I mixed in a little bit of gray because the gray was coming in at the top. So I figured, yeah, okay, it'll look more natural if I did that. And we used the long, I don't know how many inches they were, 28 inches or 30, I guess it was about 30 inches, that 
cheap Camelon hair that you buy at the dollar store. We used that, but he did, um, he did really small braids. I mean, a lot of times they'll do braids that are like the size of your finger or the size of a pencil. Well, these were about half that size. And so they were real skinny and they were all over my head and they hung down way past my waist. I mean, down almost to my hips. And what I would do, the way I would wear my hair, is I would take two sections like this, take it around back, and then tie it, just tie it in a knot. And it would hang, you know, down, tied. I loved my hair like that. I loved it. It was extremely heavy, but it was super cool, and nobody was wearing their hair like that at the time. So I was being, you know, an individualist iconoclast, which is my favorite thing to be. So um, that was really cool. So for this short time, I really felt, I felt young, healthy, hip, with it, on the cutting edge of something. Um, for about three months, I had this, this little window of time where I really freaking felt good about myself. I knew I wasn't skinny, of course. Um, I knew I was still considered fat. I was probably still considered obese. Um, but when I got into my little car, I would sit in my car and turn on my, you know, my key and I'd get ready to go. And I would put my hand on my stomach and I would look down and I would realize I could see everything. You know, there was like no boobs or gut covering up my lap or anything. I mean, I was, I was like, oh. All, my whole lap was exposed and I felt I felt like I was so close to the like there wasn't much of me and I was really close to the back of the seat I mean I felt I just felt different and I would sometimes I would wake up in the morning and I would I would feel myself to see if I was still was I still a size 18 was it really real you know I became obsessed with mirrors and I would oh and doors um, glass doors so when I was walking into a store or walking into work or something I would check myself out and I would just dig what I saw reflected back to me you know yeah okay a chunky girl but a chunky girl with great legs a waist um, cool clothes um, not I mean that's somebody who fits in any booth in any restaurant she walks into that's not true now. It was true for a little, a little space of time, you know, in my adult years. And I, I saved everything. I still have every stitch of clothing that I bought, all the jewelry, most of the shoes. Um, I don't know why. I mean, that stuff is 13 years old now and out of style. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. I think that stuff's still in style. Come to think of it. But, um, you know, 13 years later at 55, I wouldn't be able to get away with wearing what I could get away with at 42. So um, I'll never wear most of it. I mean, some of it I could probably wear again, but I'm not going to be wearing mini skirts and fishnets anymore. And, um, but I still kept it because it symbolizes a time when I really, really felt good about myself and my body image was very positive um, in spite of the fact that I wasn't thin so body image I guess is all relative um, I love watching heretic heretic housewives videos because um, she has lost so much weight um, she has she wants she has weight to lose and she wants to lose weight more okay that's fine but she has come so far from where she started and she feels so good about how far she's come and what she's achieved and and she'll talk about how things feel different and are different now than they were you know when she was however many pounds heavier that she was and it was fairly significant and I I am so inspired by watching those videos because it makes me realize I'm just I'm just another you know I'm just in the continuum of the river like everybody else it's all one big flow it's all connected we're all dealing with the same stuff regardless of how heavy we are how much we have to lose or any of that stuff um, 
we're all kind of in it together and somehow knowing that and watching everybody else's videos particularly embers um i haven't seen you on um on uh, youtube in a while ember if you watch this and um your videos are really really inspiring to me um in part because you're breathtakingly beautiful and um i thought you were breathtakingly beautiful back before you started losing weight but that's a side issue um it's just so cool to see you like it's like i can almost watch you ripping off your shell you know it's very cool um uh brenda you've been a huge um inspiration for me because you know you and your husband man you guys are just doing it you just it's you've changed your lifestyle and you're just doing it and it's really good to see um gabby it's wonderful to watch you because um you were you know you're really trying to dial in what's right for you and and eating vegetarian really feels right to you um I'm trying to think of who else um i've seen that that would who else I watch that might see this video? Um, forgive me if you guys, some of you really important people who talk about um, your food and your, your weight issues, forgive me if I have not remembered your name. Um, trust me when I say you, you're inspiring. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, so that's my kind of my body image thing. I. I don't know if I'll ever make it back to that spot. And if I do, if it's going to feel the same either, that would be interesting to find out. Um, but for nearly two weeks, I have eaten consciously and with um, an emphasis on the foods that make me feel good. I tend to do best in a higher protein situation, not for so much for weight loss. It's just my body seems to feel better. I seem to sleep better if I'm eating high protein. Um, not that I don't eat vegetables and stuff, I do, but I, there, I eat more protein maybe than is on the little food pyramid that you're supposed to eat. And, um, and the, the times I have eaten sugar, I've been very aware of it. And I've also been aware of how, how it's made me feel, you know, the next morning when I wake up, because I normally, if I'm going to eat sugar, I normally eat it at night because I'm so stressed out and I can't, I can't calm down. So I'm, um, I'm being very intentional about what I, you know, put in my system. Um, so yeah, so that is my check-in um, on food and body image. And, um, you know, as time goes by, I'll probably check in some more and let you know how I feel about it. So, hope you guys are having a great day, evening, whatever. I will talk to y'all later. Bye.